Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Jackie Owen, and I'm the Relationship Manager at the College of Law. So I have the sensational job of engaging and working and mentoring and supporting and helping law students to come into the profession. And of course, a very big part of coming into the profession is the next step after Griffith University, which is practical legal training. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. I'm joined by my wonderful colleague, Tara, who is uh, a lecturer in the, the practical legal training program. And um, she's here to, to, she's going to actually log in and show you our system live and show you all the resources and just to also talk about and answer your questions about how um, PLT is different uh, to university, what's involved in the coursework, so what's involved um, with the assessment. It is quite different from university. So if you have any questions at all as we move through, please let us know. We would be absolutely um, happy to answer those questions or you can wait to the end. Whatever suits you, if you're watching this afterwards, not live, so to speak, you can, of course, um, in the one of the last slides is my email address um, and contact details. So please do get in contact with me if you have any questions. And Tara, um, we have people from Griffith University coming to us from all over the place. We've got um, some students joining us uh, based um, on Nathan and, and up in Brisbane and some from the Gold Coast. So uh, coincidentally, both both LSAs wanted to uh, pick the same date and time. So it's like, well, that's an easy solution. We'll just have one big party with everyone joining in. So uh, we do have people in all sorts of different areas. So thanks for joining us again. What I might do is share my screen. I think it's that one and I'll just pop the slides up there you go I think there we are I think they're coming up you can see those okay can't you Tara excellent that's our friend Jaya so here's what we prepared earlier this is the lovely Jaya who um is currently she's a really interesting role actually um and she's just changed to a, a firm from in-house and she's a resources lawyer so She's getting involved in the resources sector, which is, um, you know, a sm smaller sector of the market, and she's finding it absolutely fascinating and enjoyable. So um, we've just interviewed a whole lot of our grads to find out what they thought about PLT and why they made the decision to come to College of Law and what advice they would have for students as well. So um, you'll see a, a few more of our, our grads throughout this slide deck, but that's a lot big Jaya. They're all Queenslanders too. So... Um, what one of the main things that Jaya had to talk to us about was how flexible the College of Law is and how it really does work in and around other things in your life, whether that's working or family or other obligations that you have. It's very flexible and we've got several different options um, for you to do the face to face component. So we're going to talk about that. But I love this um, analogy. It's quite cool, I think. It's quite fitting. You've built, and funnily enough, we had a sailor with us last time I gave this um, presentation, so they thought that this was actually quite cool. And it's a good thing they'd been in the navy or or whatever their background was. But you've built the boat. Universities taught you the theoretical foundations of the law, and some of you are coming to the end of your time at Griffith University. Some of you might be midway through. Some of you might have just started. But wherever you are in that journey, you're working on the the solid foundations of the law from your law degree at Griffith University, you're building the boat. But we're going to teach you how to sail that boat. So we will add to that solid foundation of theoretical knowledge, we'll add the practical day-to-day -to -day tools that you need to step out into the legal profession with confidence and confidence and become an entry-level lawyer. So that's what we're going to do and we'll actually practice those skills exactly how they are in real life um, and most of the things in our course does uh, mimic so you you all do moots so we're kind of mooting the whole the whole experience of working as an entry level lawyer so that's what practical legal training is about it's exactly what it sounds we're adding the practical skills to that solid foundation and this is what um, some of our grads that I'll introduce you to have been saying very much about flexibility, says Kerala. It's about supporting that each individual um, law graduate to be the best that they can be as an entry level new lawyer. And for Jay, it was entering the workforce with confidence. And she certainly has done that um, 
in a very big way. So she's that these three people are all doing incredible things and they're all in their first few years of practice. So hopefully this slide is not a shock to everyone and it's not a shock if I tell you an academic law degree is not what is not the only thing that you need to become a lawyer. In fact, if you do step out at graduate out of university and start calling yourself a lawyer uh, or a solicitor without or any kind of legal practitioner without being admitted um, to the court, to so the Supreme Court of Queensland or the Supreme Court of whatever state you want to practice in, you can get yourself into trouble. And we don't want that for sure. So, of course, you need to build that boat. You need that solid um, theoretical knowledge of the law, the academic law degree from Griffith University. But then the next step is adding your graduate diploma of legal practice. So our qualification, much like um, you know, the qualifications you'll get from doing any PLT course is actually a postgraduate qualification. So it's a graduate diploma of legal practice is the name of it. So you'll have that in conjunction with your law degree to take to the admissions board. So you'll do PLT, you'll learn how to sail that boat or as you set sail off into the into law land. So you add those practical skills to your theoretical knowledge. You'll practice in a safe, secure, um, supportive environment, being a lawyer without anyone going to jail, without anything bad happening if you do make a mistake. And there'll be wonderful, supportive um, mentors um, and lawyers themselves along the way, like Tara, assisting you to um, sharpen your skills, so to speak. So helping you to learn from those mistakes and put them, um, you know, give, give you the, the right way to do things and, and um, you know, help you learn and put that into practice again. So once you've done PLT, you'll get your completion certificate and your graduate diploma of legal practice and you'll jump through a little few hoops with the admissions board, prove you're a fit and proper person and then you will apply for admission. And once that all goes through, there's a lovely admission ceremony. We had that a couple of weeks ago. And you will stand up in court. Someone will move your admission. You don't have to say anything on your own. They do. And then everyone, the whole group being admitted, takes an oath and, a, and an allegiance um, sort of all as a, as a group, which is always kind of fun to hear. And um, then you go out and sign the solicitor's role. The role of solicitors, we, it's separate from from the barrister's role in Queensland. And then you get hugs and flowers and congratulations from family and friends and mentors who have supported you along the way. And then you usually go out for a nice lunch. So I do recommend taking that day off to, to truly celebrate. You'll apply and receive your admission, um, your practicing certificate from the admissions board. And that's when you're a solicitor. Now you can of course, um, <coughs> work in other legal roles or non-legal roles as an admitted solicitor. And then if you want to go and be a barrister, it's a topic for another, another time, but then you would sit the bar course, uh, get into the bar course, which is a, an exam in itself, and then do the bar course. So that's a different process and it's uh, separate from being a solicitor in Queensland. So hopefully that's not a shock to anyone that there's more to do than just to university. Now we talked about PLT at the College of Law being flexible. And I love that the choice is yours. It's very much about how do you want to do it? How will it fit into your career? Um, probably about nearly 80% or actually actually probably more, probably it's nearly 90%. Um, it's sort of a flexible um, figure of our students are already working. Uh, if you're not, we've got, I'll talk about some things we can do to help you. Um, but how do you make that fit into your part-time work, your full-time work, your family, your other obligations, your mental health um, that, that you like to look after? So, you know, do you go to the gym? Do you walk the dog? Um, do you volunteer? You know, what, what do you do outside of the law to, to, to look after yourself? So we're a whole, we're very aware that you're, you're a whole person with all these different facets to your life. And it, Doing your PLT is very important, but you also need to um, have it fit around all the other things that you need to do. So the first thing that you decide is whether or not you do it 100% online or in a blended learning situation. So if this was the olden days before COVID in maybe 2019, and who could even remember that that far, we would say, okay, week one is face-to-face, -face, whether you're an 
full-time student or a part-time student. And that involves either uh, maybe for the Brisbane people coming to the College of Law, which is centrally located in the heart of um, the legal um, district right near the courts and King George Square in Brisbane, or for those on the Gold Coast, we actually come to you. So we actually would send um, Tara or one of one of our colleagues down to do that week one face and it's face to face workshops Monday to Friday in a classroom and we are doing interactive workshops that are a lot of fun building up those practical skills. Then of course COVID hit and we couldn't be together for a couple of years, so we did that. Thing that everyone did the buzzword we pivoted pretty quickly actually it's pretty easy for the college because we were already used to teaching that in that environment and we went to 100 online now week one is still monday to friday nine to five for both part-time and full-time students interactive workshops but it's online via zoom so um, it's not this sort of situation where it's just me having a one-way conversation and you guys are eating your dinner with the with the camera and the uh, the microphone off, um, it you are all on screen. You all have your cameras on. You all have your microphones on, and we're all interacting. So Tara might send some, you know, send this group off into a breakout room here, and this group goes to breakout room two, and some the other group goes to breakout room three, and then you do stuff for a timed, so twenty minutes or half an hour, and then she calls you all back in, and then there's a group discussion on on what happened it, during that exercise, what you learned, what you'd do better. So that is very much still face-to-face -face on a computer screen. But the great thing is you can do it from anywhere. Uh, you can be, you know, in the middle of the outback, um, you know, in, in your own home with your dog, um, you know, professional on the top, jammies and slippers on the bottom, whatever you want. It doesn't matter as long as you've got good internet. Um, but if you do still like the idea of that face-to-face -face learning, then we're starting to bring that back, but we do have minimum numbers there. So that's your first choice. And then for everyone, no matter what option you choose, then from week two onwards, it's um, online and there's no workshops, lectures or anything like that to attend. You very much um, are given, um, and, and Tara's gonna talk to this in a minute, you're given activities to do that, that mimic the world of work and all the resources to complete them. So that's, um, what the first decision, 100% online or blended learning. Do you want to do the course full-time? Do you want to do the course part-time? So full-time, it's 15 weeks with that one week face-to-face, -face, either online or, or, or in the classroom, however you choose it. But one week, nine to five, Monday to Friday, um, you, you don't work that week, you come to us and then you do the remaining 14 weeks online. Part-time is full-time for week one, face-to-face -face workshop situation and then the remaining 29 weeks online. If you are working full-time, that's the one we recommend, the part-time program. But of course, that's your, your choice because the choice is yours. Now with work experience, we have three options for your work experience. And I will talk to, talk to you guys about that shortly, but you can be doing whatever grad role. I actually had an email from a, a student today saying, okay, so I've been working as a paralegal for two, for two years for, for a lawyer. And then now I've just started, she's just at the end of her PLT, I've just started working at a new firm and um, that's full time. You know, is there anything else that I need to do for college? And it's like, no, that's your work experience, the graduate job that you would be getting anyway. And as I said, most of our students are in that situation, some working full time, some working part time. Um, and it's all, all the rules are very broad in that they do cover lots of different um, working situations, which is great. Um, so, you know, some of you will choose the full-time option, uh, sorry, the 75-day option, the 25-day option, or the zero-day option. I'll talk about that further shortly. Um, or we can give you some help. Uh, we don't do placements, but we certainly do have a, a, a structure to assist you to find work experience. We have a jobs board. So people come to us and, so, you know, Sarah might be out and about, someone might say, oh, I've got a job I'd love to get a College of Law student. Well, we like to be transparent so we don't just tap a few people on the shoulder and say, hey, you should go for this. It goes up on the job board and everyone has equal opportunity to see that job and that um, that um, PLTL placement or a, or a full-time opportunity. And we also have a careers team that helps you um, with your resume and interview skills. So we'll talk about that shortly too. I think I've talk, talked about this a lot. Um, benefits of College of Law as seen by our graduates. Number one thing is flexibility. It works in and around their lives. 
it's adding those practical skills in mimicking the world of work, uh, focusing on real world tasks and doing the law rather than learning about theory, which um, you've, you've done enough of probably through university. And that's the first step, but this is the second step. Very much setting you up for success um, to support you in, to be career ready um, as an entry level lawyer from day one. And we're trusted by over 30 of the top law firms throughout Australia. So if you do end up in one of the big um, the firm's graduate programs, you will actually be coming to College of Law as a matter of course, because um, we partner with them to do their graduate programs. Now, another choice you've got to make, which is kind of cool, and I like this one, and it's been so popular, we've gone from two intakes a year to four intakes a year with this particular option. Um, we have over 150 national intakes a year and about 30 of those are in Queensland. But we've added more of our, what we call our evening courses, but what that is is a nighttime option. So sometimes people have just started work or they're busy at work and it just doesn't work for them to take that chunk of a week off. And so what we do is we take week one, we kind of tweak the program a little bit so it all fits together nicely. We arrange the jigsaw pieces. But we carve week one instead of five full-time days. We take a little knife and we chuck it, we chunk it into 12 bite-sized pieces. So 12 workshops. And we work through those. We do Tuesdays and Thursday nights for six weeks. And um, that's all, that's only for a part-time course. And it is on all that's fully online. So we used to have it where people came um, came to us, but you know, if you're at the Gold Coast, that doesn't work. But you can finish working and I stay late at work or you can zip home and you can be online with us um, in your slippers with your dog next to you um, for, for two evening courses a week. And then hopefully there's someone outside your door making you a nice dinner for, for when, you, when you finish. So that's how that's worked. And, and that seriously has gone from kind of um, two intakes a year of maybe a dozen to 15 people to four intakes a year of um, ridiculous numbers. So. Um, it's been really popular. Um, so that's another decision to make, and that might work for you. Um, I think I've, I've talked about this. Um, we're coming up to uh, 48, 49 years experience of training lawyers. So I guess what we're trying to say is we've done it before. A lot of people uh, trust the College of Law. Um, over 77% of law students in Australia nationally choose the College of Law. So um, we're very good. We're very experienced at what we do. Now, that week one, if you are thinking about doing it in, in person in Queensland, that week one, yes, you can do it at the College of Law. We've got a lovely campus, um, not like a five-minute walk from the Supreme Court, I think we are, next to King George Square um, in Brisbane. Or we do teach week one, Cairns, the Gold Coast, Rockhampton, Sunshine Coast, Toowoomba, Townsville, prefacing that with it needs minimum numbers of 10. So we are planning to come down the Gold Coast um, mid-year, uh, end of June, and then end of November, but we will need those 10. So if you're keen to do that, round up your mates, <laughs> just say, hey, we're doing this and we're doing it, we're doing it face to face, or you might like to come up to Brisbane, or you might like to do it online. So that, that is your choice again. When can you start? Well, I can't even fit all our start dates on one slide or, or even a few slides. So I would say jump on to colllaw, C-O-L-L-A-W dot E-D-U dot A-U slash P-L-T and see what works for you. So you can click on Queensland and then all the full-time options are listed in one list or the part-time options are listed in another list. You can see the different locations. So you can select the Gold Coast. Um, you can select the evening courses or the nighttime courses. So it's totally up to you which one works well. Um, we don't have any big gaps in our program. So if you miss one of ours, you do not have a five or a six month wait to, or, you know, till the next semester. You just wait till next month or probably six weeks at, at the most till the next course. So don't worry if, you know, it's the end of the year, trimester, you know, you've, um, I think your trimester two maybe finishes in September, October maybe. And you're like, oh, you know what? I just would like a little break. I wouldn't mind starting before Christmas, but having just a little break. Fine. There's an end of November intake and there's a December intake and there's an after Christmas, early January intake as well. So you have lots of options. Make it fit in with your life and you can take that little break, which I like.
Right, so let's talk nuts and the bolts. Okay, so we have, I like to, to carve PLT and think about it in three section, separate sections, the three course pillars. <laughs> Excuse me, the little, I'm a little bit chesty, it's not COVID, I promise. Um, let's just imagine it's day one of PLT. So in your mind's eye, I want you to take three course pillars out of that slide and put your name in, 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 your, in your mind's eye. Circle one is coursework. You need to finish that. And we've already talked about all the decisions. Um, you'll, you'll make how you do that coursework. But whatever decisions you make, you'll be doing four compulsory subjects and two electives. So it's really five. It's four compulsory subjects, lawyer skills, which is week one. So that's the fifth one that counts as a subject and then two electives. Um, that's component one. And Laura's, um, Tara's going to talk a little bit further about that because that's her area of expertise as one of our lecturers. Um, part two is work experience. So you need to tick that off. Um, and that's where you're putting your practical skills um, into use in the real legal environment. And then three, continuing professional education. So. I'll talk about that shortly. Um, but our elective subjects you'll choose from such fun things as admin law, banking and finance, consumer law, criminal law, employment and industrial law, family law, planning and environmental law, and wills and estates. And it really will depend on where you're working and, and what your dream is and where you think you want to end up. But of course, just because you don't do those particular um, electives and you end up in, say, criminal law and you haven't done that, um, haven't done that as an elective, you can, of course, practice in any area because the skills that we're teaching you um, do carry over. So that's um, the three areas of PLT. Now, Tara, in a moment, we'll, we'll change over to your slides. But this is, I think, a really great diagram for life, as I like to call it. But it certainly is the life cycle of a PLT. We're learning information. We're learning practical skills. We're putting them into practice and Tara's going to explain how. We're actually doing real documents on, on mock matters, handing them into our boss, which is Tara or one of our lecturers. We're gaining feedback and Tara will talk to that. And, and then sometimes your work will be satisfactory, sometimes it's not satisfactory. You use that feedback to improve and get better. If you do need to put it back into practice and resubmit, that's fine. Everyone has to do that at some stage. And then you do... Um, you'll review it at the end and then you'll learn from that and then you'll put it into practice. So we pretty much go around in an endless um, loop um, with interactive tasks and practice area um, electives. So what I might do is stop, stop the share and then hand over to Tara and she's actually got her... Um, now, don't worry if her dashboard looks very busy she's teaching many <laughs> many groups at the moment and each group has their own timetable and and subjects and so she has multiple groups at the same time you'll only be part of one group so don't worry yours won't be as busy as Tara is she also has all the ones that have graduated um okay so what I thought so civil litigation is the second um Yes, second subject that you do. Um, ethics is the first one. But, um, yeah, with your um, civil litigation, I just thought I'd take you through one of the activities to have a, have a bit of a look at it. I can put you on student view. So this is, once you're enrolled in the course, this is what you'll actually and just a quick question um, we've got here from Joe. that's good. Do you do one subject or more at a time? And that will depend if you're part-time or full-time. So we might add that into what you're saying at the moment. Yeah, well, I'll answer that now. So you do one subject at a time until you end up with your electives. And then with your electives, so you do two electives, like Jackie just said, um, the electives are done at the same time as each other so yes double the work but with your electives there are only two activities due for each subject instead of for example with civil where there are six activities due um, for civil litigation and your full-time course 
you have a lot to do every week um, versus the part-time course where you will have maybe two activities during a week. Um, with your full-time course, you may have three or four uh, activities during a week. And so it is a big workload, hence why if you work in full-time, we usually don't suggest that you do the full-time course. Um, but like Jackie said before, it's totally up to each individual, what they choose to do. So let's just have a look. So there's a few ways you can actually access your activities. Um, this is one way, and I just wanted to show you what this looks like. So activity 1.3, you're drafting a claim and statement of claim. So we've got a bit of an intro, then we move on to your instructions, there's a supervisor's memo that you click onto. So basically everything's here for you. Um, it's just one click away. So you've got your instructions that are available via PDF. You've got your central resources. Once again, just a click away. So our practice papers, the relevant practice papers, you just click onto it um, like that. So it's all there for you waiting. What else do we have? Oh, some case studies to help you, um, you know, applying those, I guess, the skills you learn in the actual resources. So the case studies help you sort of implement those skills. And then you do the actual activity, which is like I said, uh, drafting a claim and statement of claim in the state jurisdiction for this. And then you um, submit and when you submit your activity, there are due dates like you see up here, this one, because this is an older course, this was due on 11 Feb. So once you submit, we then go about providing you with feedback. Now the feedback can be um, oral feedback, so it might be a video, or it might just be some audio for you, but you receive individual feedback. So I will go through and, you know, my video might be general feedback, but I'll go through your activity and provide, you know, um, written feedback for you to apply, which then helps you when you're pre preparing for the oral assessment and completing that as well. Like Jackie said, sometimes you might need to resubmit, but you'll have so much feedback that you'll, you'll know what needs to be done. Um, plus, if you are a little bit, you know, unsure, your lecturer is there to help you. So we're only a, an email away. Um, we're all pretty approachable and we respond pretty quickly to those queries as well. I've got another great question here. And how are the courses graded? Yep. So now your activities are not specifically graded. Your activity is about um, putting your knowledge, I guess, into practice. You know, the knowledge you obtain from the various resources and the case studies. So they don't contribute to your actual grade. But the activities, you need to be competent in each of those activities before you can actually um, complete the oral assessment. And so you might go, well, I'll just roll the arm over with that activity. But one, you're not giving yourself the best learning experience. And two, if you put effort into your activities, that will then make preparing for the oral assessment so much easier and also participating in the oral assessment so much easier. So your oral assessment is what equates to your mark. So it's 100% of your grade and we mark um, like in undergrad, you know, high distinction, distinction, credit, et cetera. There's a rubric available, or, you know, can we make it sound funky, um, but it's just your assessment criteria there or you, you know, so you know going to the oral assessment what's expected for each. 
And quite often at the beginning of each subject, you'll do a, a feed forward or a different lecturers call them different things, won't, won't they? You'll say, hey, for this subject, this is what we're learning and this is what I need to see. Yeah, yeah. So it's just an, I find sometimes, you know, if, for example, with Sybil, it's very rule intensive, a um, little bit scary sometimes, don't know where to start. So with the feed forward or the announcements, I'll do a written one with the video um, within it and just talk you through the concepts. So I always say to students, read my announcement, watch my announcement, then, you know, have a crack at, at your activity. And everything is there. We do, um, we do um, give you um, practice papers that Tara was mentioning. They're online and you can ask for, um, we do ask you if you want a hard copy as well. There's no running down to the, um, the bookshop anymore and spending more money. That's all just provided. And then all these online, um, everything that you need is at your fingertips here on our system. And it's reviewed annually and um, or even more than that. And it's always up to date and um, everything that you need is there. And then the lecturers will guide you as to how to use that materials as well. So um, it's pretty comprehensive. Mohammed's just asked a good question. Is there an option to change from full-time to part-time? Absolutely. We that happens a lot, doesn't it? Actually, because people go, oh, "I'll be all right," because I, I studied, <laughs> I studied, um, I studied full time, and I worked at uni, and I was fine. And look, a lot of people are. That's absolutely your choice. You know how you know how organised you are, and I think it's about organisation and keeping up. That's just a hot tip. Um, but if you get to the end of week one and you've talked to the lecturer and you think, "Oh, mm, you know what." All right, Jackie was right. Tara was right when I when I attended that presentation way back in April. I should have listened. Um, I think I will drop down to part time. That's fine. There's always a part time course coming right behind the full time course. That's how we plan it out so that we can just simply transfer you across. If um, it's after a certain time period, and I think it is from week two onwards, there potentially is a fee for that change. So, um, but but not by the end of week one. And, and you'll usually know, don't you reckon, Tara, by the end of week one, when you've yeah. really had it all laid out, you'll go, oh, okay, I'll be kind to myself and not <laughs> suffer a burnout right at the start. Um, we, we do recommend being kind to yourself. Um, you know, it's it's only adding another 15 weeks to it, really. It's not that long a, long a time. So that's a great question, Mohammed. I really appreciate you asking that one. Mm -hmm. Um, did you want me just to touch quickly on oral assessments? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. So like I said uh, before, I had, had the rubric or the selection criteria um, up, but let me just, it won't all fit on the one screen. I love but, saying that word, rubric. Uh, <laughs> Rolls off the top. Um, so with your oral assessment, so that's how you assess. No more writing madly, um, for example. Um, the oral assessments of 45 minutes to an hour in length. Uh, like I said before, 100% of your mark. You need to be competent for each activity and activities make up tasks. So you have to be competent in the task. You have to complete a multiple choice test, which um, is a good practice for getting your head around the oral assessment. And then it's oral assessment day. So the oral assessments will occur depending on the number of students over one or two days. The first oral assessment is at 9 a.m., last one at 4 p.m. You get to sign up for your own date and time, you know, in the allocation dates but first come first serve basically um, and look there's many oral assessors um, running around in the college of war they are all different the assessors so when I'm assessing I like to make it a conversation other assessors are a bit more you know it's like being before a judge you get questions fired at you um, and they want a quick answer. Uh, it is open book, but 
because we've got so much to get through in your oral assessment, um, you know, you don't have time to go pouring through your notes. Um, you know, you need to know where everything is, basically. And with civil and some of the electives, there's a hearing component. So um, in civil, it's an interlocutory application. You prepare your court documents as one of your activities. You draft your written submissions as one of your activities. And then as part of the oral assessment, um, you provide your oral, um, oral submissions uh, for, for that fact scenario as well. So that's, you know, it's not just question and answer. Like I said, it's, it's like those moves that Jackie mentioned. Before. Absolutely. And I think having different, you'll have different oral assessors throughout the course. And just like you'll have different bosses or different supervising lawyers that you're working for, and you'll get to you know, experience different styles throughout your career. The assessments are, look, everyone's nervous the first one. And usually they come out of the first one going, okay, I know I'm, I'm prepared now for the second one onwards is usually they're a little bit um less nervous about it. And, and that's all we're trying to do tonight, you know, sort of talk about how, you know, be prepared, know your work, and then you won't need to be, um, you won't need to be nervous. And basically, when you're in the workforce, your boss is not going to say, hey, what's going on with that matter? Next Friday, I'd like 500 words on my desk explaining what's going on with that client. They're very much going to say, Stop by your, your office will say, hey, come to my office. All right, fill me in. And you'll also have to be able to summarise complex legal situations and concepts to your clients who more often than not will not be lawyers and have the benefit of a law degree. So um, it, I think, you know, being able to succinctly summarise where you're up to or what's going on in a case. Um, is very much what we're trying to mimic here. So, and the different communication styles will be indicative of, of um, the, the workplace as well. So it again is mimicking the world of work. So don't be nervous. You're having a nice conversation with a nice person like Tara. <laughs> I, I should have said before too, like I, I kept harping on about with civil, there's, you know, drafting the court documents, but you know, you are required to do a letter of advice, for example, or a memo to a supervisor. So there's all different um, types of communications that mm. we get you to prepare. And all very much ones that, uh, documents that you'll be expected to, to produce um, out in the real world as an entry level lawyer as well. So again, taking um, having you do that experience in a safe, secure, supportive environment with feedback from someone like Tara to be able to, when, when you're asked to do that at work, you can go, oh, yes, I know how to do that. And you'll have all your materials there if you do need some guidance. So um, another thing in terms of resources, which is super exciting, that's coming really soon. So by the time you guys are um, on your way, um, you know, out, out of the College of Law into the profession, we're actually trialing something called a new lawyer toolkit at the moment. So a lot of we're, we're developing new resources as well as lot that, lots that we have into an, um, a platform where as a new lawyer, as a, only as a graduate of the College of Law, you'll have access to that. And, and one of the things is a whole lot of precedence, isn't it? And, and, and templates that you'll be able to take out into, into the work and you'll have access to that. Um, as a graduate, so as well as our practice papers, um, all the updated ones. So that's a really exciting tool that we're going to give all of our graduates um, very shortly as well. It's nearly, nearly ready. It's been a big project over the last year. So it's being trialled in Queensland, which we're very excited. All right. So uh, does anyone have any questions about coursework? We can, of course, go back to questions at the end about anything we've discussed. But if not, what we might do is, why is it that? There we go. So it just took a minute to, to get up. Now, that's coursework. And the exciting thing about it is um, you're actually learning from very experienced. There's Tara, second last one on the right. Um, lecturers and lawyers and mentors themselves within the course. So these are all Queenslanders. 
And some of our lecturers are, have are very experienced lawyers that um, are now with us as full-time lecturers uh, at the College of Law, and their passion is uh, mentoring and developing the next generation of legal practitioners. And they've been doing it for a while and doing it very well, uh, judging by the, the, the um, amazing grads we have out there winning all these awards and, and being well recognised within the, within the profession. Um, but some of them are still practising lawyers, barristers, um, mediators, uh, tribunal members themselves. So they do that as their, I guess, their day job. And then they do the College of Law on top of that. So they also have a passion for developing and mentoring the next generation of legal practitioners, but they are also still practising. And, and most of our lecturers, even the um, full-time ones that are actually practising, do still maintain a practising certificate and do a lot of pro bono work, um, um, you know, real law work to, to maintain that. So it's actually probably hundreds of years of experience just on that one slide. And that's only just a, a little snippet of some of our fabulous um, lecture, lecturers and mentors that you'll meet. And they're all different. And they all bring um, expertise in different areas of the law, but they're all one thing in common, amazing, experienced practitioners um, who are there to get you through the course. They're not there to tri trick you up or trip you up. They're there to get you through the course and get you out into um, the profession. They're very proud of all our graduates. So... Um, looking forward to you guys joining those ranks. Okay, that's coursework. Tick box one and the big, the big meaty one that we really got to talk about. But there's also um, part two, which is work experience, and part three, which is CPD. So work experience. Again, um, choices for you to make depending on your unique situation. And everyone in, on this call will have their own different uh, situation that they've got happening in terms of work and other obligations. So here's... <coughs> Um, what we have to offer you. So work experience can be done 75 days, 15 days or zero days. Now, again, in the olden days, um, which was prior to 2020, um, we would be sitting here saying, okay, we've got two options, 75 days or 15 days. Then, of course, COVID came and, and put it all on its ear. And now we have a, I guess it's the, um, Joe, great question. Yes, you can. And I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in. Um, Joe's just asked if we can have some of um, your past work experience recognised absolutely for the 75-day option. Um, so the zero day is when not as many people are doing that one now because there's so there's a lot of work out there at the moment and 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 people like the we watched the job drug the job board in March 2020 go but now it's going up. So that's really exciting. There's a lot of opportunities around. So let's talk about all three. All three options um, just separately, and I'll, I'll answer Joe's question. 75 days of work experience this is a standard option, and it's what probably most of our students do, to be honest. Um, but there's other options for other people, and I love that you get to choose what's right for you. It's not, it's not a one-size-fits-all. So the 75-day program is 75 days of work experience. Now, Joe, his ex work gets really exciting. If you have been working in the profession and the work that you have been doing, say a paralegal role, for example, um, meets the criteria of our work experience, which is that you've been dealing with clients, you've used a file management system, you've been drafting documents, you've been doing legal research, um, and there's no set, you don't have to write out, oh, it's 10% this and 50% that. You just have to say, I've done those things because, you know, it's hard, it's, you know, it's pretty hard to break down and each job will have a different makeup. But if you've done those things and the lawyer that you're working under is, um, you know, agrees and, and is happy to sign you off, you can claim 60, six zero days of that 75 days of work experience retrospectively, which means any of um, up to 60 days, it might just be 10, but it might be 60 or anywhere in between in the two years before PLT. So let's just say you're coming to us this November, November 2022. If you think way back to November 2020, if you can find 60 days in that two-year period, you can claim them. So that, And you can be actually putting them in now. So let's just say you're not coming to us for a year and you're just changing from one job to another job. Get that first job signed off as while you're still there. Um, especially if you've only done like a 10-day placement, which is cool. Um, it's all experience. But in a year or a year and a half, they might go, who, what? 
yeah, I, I, I remember her, but or him. I'm not like who supervised them and what did they do? Are we happy to sign off? Obviously, if you've been there for two years and it's a year later, they'd remember you. But if, especially if those short, shorter placements, just get it done and put on file. And that, that's another thing off your to-do list at the end as well. I really encourage that. Send it to College of Law. We'll mind it. We'll put it on your profile. But you don't have to worry about where those bits of paper have got to, which is good as well. Um, I find keeping track of bits of paper very, very hard some days. So get it all um, electronic and just we'll look after it. Don't worry about it. So 75 days, the final 15 days has to be done during um, unless, during um, the, the coursework time or in the two years after. So just to break that down, days one to 60 can be done two years prior during when you're doing PLT or you've got two years after the course, actually. So you've got a, a hell of a long time to do it. The final 15 can't be claimed retrospectively. It has to be done pretty much at the same time as your coursework or after. You've got two years. So it's up to you. Some people get all their coursework done and then do their uh, work experience. Uh, I think probably most people are doing it at the same time, but the option's yours. So the last 15 days um, would be after you come back from that week one. So let's just say, um, Joe, that you're working full time and doing the course part time. You come back in what is essentially week two of PLT and you do week two, week two, week two, week three, week four, five, 10, 15, you're done. Now, if you're working, if you're doing PLT full time, you can only claim two days a week. So you would do two, four, six, eight, 10, seven and a half weeks and you'd be done by the end of week 15. So that's how that would work. Then you would do a reflective journal and there are some forms to sign off. So there's a form you, you do at the beginning to say, hey, college, this is where I'm working and who's supervising me. You sign, your supervisor signs. And at the end, um, whether it's 10 days or whether it's day 75, you say, hey, college, I've finished. And you sign and your supervisor signs. It has to be the same person bookending it. You'll do your reflective journal just on the 15 days. And then you sign your supervisor signs. That's done and dusted. You can have as many employers at, as you like, but you put in a set like the bookend forms for each workplace. And then, but just the journals on just that final one, just the final 15 days. So that's what we call a standard 75 day option. And that's what a lot of people do. And it's just the job that you've got, um, that you would have, your graduate job, whatever, whatever that might be. Now, the 15-day option is for people that maybe want to do it a bit more quickly. Sometimes people are working and, you know, we've all got mortgages or rent or bills or stuff to pay for, food, keeping the lights on, keeping the internet up, all those sorts of, you know, boring adulting things that just, you know, some days you just get over. But we all have to adult um, at least some of the time. Um, so we have to work and we have to be able to do that. So if if you're working, say, you're a second career or for whatever reason you're working outside the law and you've actually got to take holidays to go and volunteer somewhere, you don't want to take 75 days off, um, you know, 75 days of leave to go and do 75 days of unpaid work or just do 70. Who, who can afford to do that? I couldn't. So there's a 15-day option and you can do that with an additional um, five-week online. I want to say that's incorrect. It's actually six weeks. I need to change my slides. Sorry. Um, it's a six weeks additional program and um, there's, a, there's an extra cost for that extra subject and it's a start date and a finish date. You'll do your 15 days, then you'll do the six weeks program and it's $1,500 um, for that extra subject. If you're really struggling and you just can't take the time off to go and um, volunteer, you can do the zero days with an eight week online program with with a mentor so it's actually a mentored program and it's that's about two thousand dollars extra now tara will have her group and you will have a tara for for your particular group so um you will have that person looking after your group as your online mentor however if you're doing that third option you get a one-on-one -on -one mentor as well so it's a second person so um, that is only available up until the end of this year um, at the moment. Um, it could continue next year, we're not sure. And to be honest, numbers are dropping in there because people want to be doing the 75 and the 15-day work experience and they want to be putting stuff on their resume. 
Uh, another really great question. I'm loving all the questions, Tara. I love questions. It means that people are listening and want to know what, what we're talking about. So thank you. Um, yes, you can start PLT when you have only one or two subjects left. So, but there is, and, and actually a lot of, I probably find that Griffith students are the ones that use this the most because of the trimester system. Maybe, I, I don't know what it is. Um, so if you have done all your Priestley 11 subjects, and those will be listed on the law school's website, your core subjects. Once you've done all your core subjects that meet the criteria of the Priestley 11, you can apply to the admissions board to come into, into PLT early, but you have to only have one or two electives left. Once you get the permission, you can come in. So let's just say that last trimester, you are just doing part-time and you're doing two electives, and you think, yeah, why not? Might as well start my PLT now. Um, you know, whether you choose to do that part time, just to start a little bit earlier, get that permission and you can come in. And that's actually a rule for, um, oh, you go to the Legal Admissions Practitioners Board website, which um, is within the Queens and Law Society website. Um, but pretty much just Google um, Queensland Legal Practitioners Board and then go, they've got, they've got information. They do have an email and they do have a phone number that you could ring. Um, so um, it's an online form that you do, and I think it takes about three days um, to get through. But certainly chat to the admissions board if you're interested in that um, situation. Um, anyway, so that's work experience, the second criteria. So you'll tick that off as well. And then the third one is the continuing professional education. And this is, well, say 10 hours, you might go do it quickly, you might take a bit longer, but it's 10 modules. We say on average, it takes about an hour to do each module and um, you will, it's all based on its legal technology and business skills for the changing future of law. And it's an additional certificate of legal technology and business that that will give you. So an extra thing for your resume, um, an extra thing to put on your LinkedIn talk about. So um, that's actually in response to requests from the profession saying that, you know, those business skills and we've added legal technology, it's so important. If anyone is interested in technology and the law and disruption of the law and AI and all that sort of stuff, please um, um, get in touch with our Centre for Legal Innovation or look them up, just Google them, or, or there'll be information from our website as well, the College of Law website. They're part of the College of Law. We're celebrating six years and pretty much the Centre for Legal Innovation explores that and um, you can attend a whole lot of online events and learn more about that and meet people. There's some um, doing some excellent stuff. So with your, um, with your CPE, we just say um, it's all included and there's no extra cost. You just, we go, here you are, here's your college login. In week one, your, uh, the lecturer that you have in week one will be showing you the system and they'll go, here's where those modules are. Just work through, you just work through them. So if you want to do one a week for, fifth, for 10 weeks, that's fine. And here's, my new, here's where my new expression comes in. I've invented a new expression. If you want to Bridgerton them, which means just, start at, at, at episode one and, and go chung, 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 like I did with Bridgerton seasons one and two over Easter with my friend, um, you can just go bang, 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 bang over one or two days across the weekend, for example. It's totally up to you how you want to do that, but you just do them, you get an extra certificate and that ticks off your CPE. So that's how that works. Okay, let's sit through um, a little bit of extra information and then we can um, have some more questions. Um, We've got lots of support um, throughout, actually starting from now. Uh, we have a wonderful student liaison team within our student services, and they are there to answer all your questions about the nuts and bolts. If you need to change your enrollment, so Mohammed asked before about um, changing from um, full-time to part-time, you would get in contact with student services and they would help you with that. Um, so they're there sort of on the admin side of things. Um, we have our instructors, our lecturers, our online mentors like Tara, that will work with you. Um, they are lawyers, they are legal practitioners or barristers or, or other legal practitioners, and they will be by your side throughout the, the length of the course, working with you to get you through the course, uh, giving you that individual feedback and hopefully keeping you on track. Keeping up is a big tip. So get it all diarised and, and work through it. We also have a wonderful team of career coaches. We've got Susan Pincus, who's on screen now. She's been with us for quite a while. And we also have um, her colleague, which is a lovely lady called Ruth. Susan's in Melbourne, Ruth is in Sydney. But between the two of them, they're, all, they're available for one-on-one -on -one, um, um, sessions to, to talk about interview prep, resume reviews, 
building your personal brand. So giving you those employability skills. Now, they also do a lot of online workshops that are available to university students, and I'll always let your law student societies know about that. So um, either follow us on Facebook, follow your LSA, um, and, and or follow me on LinkedIn and or connect with me on LinkedIn and you'll you'll hear about those. And um, it's much like this presentation. If you're not there live, you'll get the recording. So I think it's really important, no matter what year you are in uni, to be, you know, to be working on those employability skills, whether it's LinkedIn, resumes, hearing about what different jobs are in the law, in the law it's really important. And of course, we've got college connections, so you can connect with employers via our jobs board. And um, obviously, we have a very strong alumni system, and we have our um, new lawyer toolkit, which you get access to from as soon as you start PLT, really. And that's incredible. You'll be quite impressed by that. Do it your way. Um, basically, all those decisions to make, but you pay for what you need. Um, it's the so so you know how we, it's sort of like everyone does the coursework. All the materials are provided. The CPD is provided. Everything's provided. That's nine thousand four hundred and sixty for Australian citizens and um, permanent residents. Fee help is available, so that's like your hex. You sort of put it on that payment plan for the government. Or it's uh, a little bit more for international students, but not like uni where it's double. I'm glad to tell you. Um, and then if you decide to do the short format, which is that 15 days with a six week course, it's an extra $1,500. If you decide to do the mentored one on one program, it's an extra 2000. So everyone's paying that main base. And then you add either nothing because you're doing the 75 day option or you add the short or you add the thing. So it's up to you. Um, it's you're just you paying for what you use, which I think is quite good. Um, no one's subsidising anyone. It's all just this is what I want to do, and this is this is what it costs. Um, I'll flick through these because I want to get to see if there's any more questions. But very much giving you um, skills for real life, role playing interviews, negotiation, courtroom appearances under the guidance of very experienced lawyers, barristers, judges, tribunal members. Um, mediators so it's very much real practitioners giving you those real skills and you are do, you're learning by doing and you're mimic, mimicking how real world um, matters operate so when you're a graduate lawyer you kind of get given bits of everything like okay I need you to do this I need you to do this I need you to do that so it's very you know come in and talk to me and tell me how you're doing I need those documents for for this I need you to do that so it's very much about um having you experience all those things and in a real world situation and it's very much about not just sitting down it's, there's no sitting down and doing exams anymore it's all very much about um what we call review session the new name for um, oral assessments is a review session tara doesn't it sound heaps less scary but it's basically where you get that feedback and then you go and you chat to one of our lecturers at the end and you talk about what you've learned you reflect so always have your reflections ready because that actually can count. And you're sitting down with that senior lawyer who's your lecturer to have a constructing conversation on how to improve your skills, reflect on what you've learned um, and answer some questions. So that's what um, that's that's how we do it. Um, now, we talk to our we had a think we talked to our grads, you know, how do you make decisions about choosing your PLT provider? Because you've got options. Um, number one is, do they have regular intake? So if I miss this intake, how long do I have to wait? Because in my experience, all law graduates want to get admitted ASAP, if not sooner. So when's the next one? Well, if you miss one of ours, we've got one in a few weeks. It's we've 150 a year nationally with over 30 in Queensland. So you don't have to wait very long at the College of Law at all. Can I study the way I want? Well, yes. Not only can you choose part-time or full-time, you can choose 100% online or you can do that blended learning option, but you can do that nighttime option as well. And that is, as I said, so popular. We've gone from 20 students a year to four massive intakes a year. So, you know, do you want to chunk it up and do it that way? Everyone has a different answer. It's totally up to you. Can you complete this course quickly? Because people just want to get admitted. We know we've, we've been doing this for a while. We've had these conversations. Yes. If you have done your work, get your work experience done, get all your forms in, do your coursework, you're not late with anything, you complete, hold up your end of the bargain, then yes, we can get you done in 15 weeks. So that's quite exciting as well. Obviously, there's a little time after um, your, your end date 
to allow the, the wheels to turn and everything to be moderated to get your completion certificate. But we usually say allow a couple of weeks after that um, to get all your documents from us for admission. Talk to friends and colleagues. Now, with nearly 80% of, you know, 77% of people, law graduates across Australia, choosing the College of Law, you don't have to go very far to find someone um, who's done uh, who's done PLT with the College of Law. So chat to them about that, chat to other people, see what they say about their experience. And then, of course, think about um, the fact that you'll be practice, most likely practising in Queensland. Do you have a local campus? Yes, we do. We've been um, in Queensland for 20 years, so we've been doing this a long time. In fact, the College of Law has been around uh, 48, 49 years nationally. But it's in Queensland because the legal profession itself said, hey, why are we still flying people to Sydney? Why don't we have train, you know, training locally in Queensland? So we, and so Amory David, our executive director, went, yes, you're right. And she was actually asked to set up the College of Law. She started with three students and look at us now. So um, we're, we're very much a, a queen, the College of Queensland is part of a national body, but very much um, locally taught, local content, local practitioners. These are your colleagues. So you might be being taught with someone and then down the track you might be a person council. Um, so you're very much connecting into their local networks, which is really exciting as well. And then, of course, they, they missed out number six, which is choose the College of Law, which, you know, boom, tish, it's my little joke at the end. So I think it's, um, you know, number, number, the number six option. Okay, so... Flying through this, because I'm, I'm watching the time, um, this is what we achieved last year, over 180 PLT programs in seven Australian states and territories. So pretty much we had to keep adding them. And we've already added at least three courses this year alone to uh, an evening one, at least one evening one and one full-time and one part-time, I think. So we've added um, a lot already. Just in the last year alone, last 12 months, or 2021, we assisted um, over 5,000 students across Australia into the profession. Um, we taught in 19 different locations. Um, Susan and Ruth are very busy and did 425 career consultations. And nationally, we've got over 277 qualified lawyers mentoring our students. So Tara, it's just but one of them. There's 276 you're yet to meet, which is exciting. They're all lovely too. Um, we hosted 11 free careers webinars with 31 guest speakers, and you guys can attend those now. So I really encourage you to do that. Over a thousand jobs on our jobs board. Now, here's some, some great stuff as well. If you decide to do our master's program, which is really, really practical, loved by the profession, if you've done PLT with us, then eight subject masters becomes six because we give you two credits into that master's program. So I know it's overwhelming to think about that now, but you will, you will three to five years after, on average, after um, after admission. So that's just something to plant there. And then we also do um, the prep pro um, program for um, working in the U, being admitted in the UK, and also um, the New York Bar and California Bar as well. And we're celebrating six years of the Centre for Legal Innovation. If you've got any interest in um, legal tech and um, that side of the law, please um, connect with the Centre for Legal Innovation. Now, I'm hoping that all of you have this on your calendars already because it's been out there. Um, exciting time of the year, the annual Queensland Law Society Legal Careers Expo, their flagship event for students. We are very proud to, to yet again be the principal partner. So you will step inside the door and you will see the biggest stand of all belongs to us. And I will be there with lots of um awesome people and come and chat to us and we have free things and may I be the first to tell you well you guys be the first to be told we'll have cookies this year so just come for a cookie they're so good um so come along get a pen chat about PLT um it's free um and you can zap that little QR code thing but just go to the Queensland Law Society website and um you can learn all about it now Bring your phone or your tablet or your laptop or whatever. You can actually, you do have to sign up for this beforehand, but you can make an appointment to book in to have a real um, legal practitioner look at your um, LinkedIn profile and also your resume. So you bring that in hard copy or on, on your on your device or whatever. I'd, I'd go hard copy. 
we're all old with glasses. Um, so bring that, get that reviewed. Um, and there's also free professional headshots. Now, this is an opportunity. I reckon it's worth going just for this. Um, you know, dress as if you are going to an interview, at least in this bit, and you can get a professional photographer to do that um, LinkedIn headshot. So that's awesome. I think I'm getting one. And then you can go around to all the organisations there, and they're not just firms, the government, and um, sometimes there's like, um, yeah, all sorts of all sorts of things that you wouldn't expect. So they're all listed on the QLS website. So come and come and say hi, 12 to 4 on Monday, the 9th of May, at the Brisbane Convention Exhibition Centre. And for Gold Coasters who maybe aren't as familiar with um, Bris Vegas, if you jump on the train and get off at South Brisbane, um, directly, like that's a direct line, I don't think there's any changes, um, you'll be on the door of the convention centre, right next door, in fact. Yes, right next door. Um, so come along and join us. Um, we'd love to see you. So we would love to stay in touch. I would like my phone to be blowing up tonight with all my LinkedIn requests. So just look up Jackie Owen. I am a J-A-C-Q-Y, Owen. No S, just Owen. And that's my picture on LinkedIn. So I'll look familiar. Or if you've got any questions um, that you think of after now, um, jowen at colaw.edu.au. Now, um, that's my phone number too. Feel free to ring me, but um, sometimes it's because um, I'm running all over the place. Just email me and we can make a time to call. That's not a problem. Um, I would also recommend following the College Law on your social media of choice, whether it's um, Facebook, um, Instagram, or LinkedIn. I'd, I'd say Facebook and LinkedIn are the two main ones. I think we do it with some tweeting now and again. I don't know because I don't do follow that. But that'll keep you up to date with what's happening, all those free webinars. Um, and if you would like a copy of our online guide, I'm going to send you a follow-up email with lots of resources, including this guide. But feel free to um, do that. Now, I'm just going to release the share and come back to you on a, on a proper screen. And... Um, Thank you very much. We've got a smidge them over, but there's just so many great questions and so much to tell you. Um, so thanks for bearing with us. But does anyone have any any more questions? I'll bring the chat box over. And you might think of something later on. So feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn and, and ask or, or send me an email. Um, but we really do appreciate you joining us this evening. Um, and um, for your interest in the College of Law. And um, as I said, more than happy to answer questions now or... Um... Thanks, Lily. You're getting close too, aren't you? I think you're getting really, really close. So, no, we do appreciate that. Um, we do, I will download this recording and get it sent out to everyone who registered. That's for you to... Um, consume and uh, they'll have lots of I'll, I'll put the lots of links to some cool stuff um oh yeah here let me do my email address for you j o w e n at c o l l a w dot e d u dot a u enter there we go there you go and everyone um Excellent. And um, your Law Student Society have also got my email address. And um, yes, it's recorded. And I'm going to download it now. And I'm going to send it off to our marketing. So it will be a couple of days, but you'll get an email from me directly. So that'll give you my email address. And I've, um, I've already got the email written. I've got lots of cool resources for you. The, the handbook and the LinkedIn um, tips book and a bunch of stuff. And then if you've got any friends that, that miss this, hit forward and send it on and tell them if they've got any questions to contact Jackie Owen directly. So on the 9th of May, if you are at um, the career fair, please come up and introduce yourself and say, hey, I was I was on your call way back in April the 27th and we'd love to see you. Um, there'll be a cookie and um, lots of other free stuff. They're so good, these cookies, sir, so I can't even, I can't even describe them. Um, uh, but we'd love to for you to come along and then there's all the other resources as well. So. Um, I'll let you go. I'm pretty sure that you've got dinner waiting, your trashy TV of, of, of choice. Uh, I think I think I think I'm doing MasterChef tonight. And um, it's pretty good. I like this new season. And um, you've probably got some uni work to do. So thanks for joining us. And we will look forward to seeing you soon at the College of Law. And if you've got any questions, get in touch. And please 
everyone go straight to their LinkedIn and send, send me a connection request. I'd love, I'd love to hear from you. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Talk soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Tara. Bye.